Dirty Roots Radio, 89.5 FM, and uh, don't forget we're uh, worldwide, www, you don't have to say www anymore, everybody knows that, wgrn.net is our web address, and uh, joined in studio here by Ian and Trinka from uh, Omnibus 11, and uh, I've got a little bit of a hum in my headphones, I don't know if you guys do either, but uh, we're, yep. we'll, we'll make do and we'll, we'll just do our thing. So uh, you guys are the first ones in our local artist spotlight, man. Excellent. Yeah. We feel honored. We uh, we kind of tinkered, cool. tinkered with the idea of doing that, and uh, we got you guys, and then uh, I don't know if you know Split Face, local uh, musician. He's coming in next week, and then uh, Jeff Chapman's coming in uh, October 1st. So Cool. Three right in a row, but we're glad to have Omnibus 11 here. So you guys introduce yourselves and uh, explain what you do within the group and, and uh, whatever else you want us to know. I'm Trinka. I just sing. <laughs> Just saying, no, no big deal. She likes to say that, and I'm Ian. I do instrumentation, backing vocals, and all general purpose noise, basically. He does everything else. Everything yeah. else? Yeah. Awesome. So, there's only two of us, so it's got to be split up somehow. Sure. Yeah. I'll have you guys scoot up just a little bit closer to your microphones Sorry. there. No, it's not... Uh, <laughs> It's just this whole radio thing is very intimidating. Just, I just, I just moved the whole table. Did you did. Yeah, I did see that. That was wow, awesome. Wow, that's really good for my self-esteem. Hey, he leans on the table, and the whole <laughs> countertop and 300 pounds of equipment just shifted. That's all right. All right. Anyway, let's talk about some music here. So, tell us uh, what Omnibus Eleven is, and uh, you know, you got a new album out. Tell us about that, and just what, uh, just the whole thing. Uh, the whole thing kind of birthed uh, back in 2005 because uh, a friend of mine had written a movie and wanted some music and there was a female lead in the movie so that prompted me to write a song that required female vocal and kind of through a mutual acquaintance uh, Trink and I had met each other and she kind of popped up and said oh well I sing and I said yeah 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 sure you do <laughs> and then um, and then this opportunity to do this song for this film came up and and she actually sang for me over the phone which I thought was really gutsy you know no sure. reverb no nothing just over the phone for the little little you know mic in the phone or whatever and, and she sounded really good and then she came over and we talked and she kind of played me some stuff that she had done previously with other people and, and then we did the one song and we were really pleased with it and so I think we just at that point kind of said, hmm, we should probably explore this a little farther. Yeah, I actually played for him some of the uh, jingles that I recorded here when I was going to Greenville for a studio singing class with um, Dr. Michael Johnson. All right. Back in the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, good. Dude. That was actually, personally, that was the, the biggest thing I wanted to ask you was how you guys found each other because... Uh, Trinka and uh, her husband went to, I helped out at, at church and youth group and stuff and knew them through that and I knew Ian from my college days, you were kind of a fixture here and uh, all of the uh, <laughs> lunacy we were all a part of and uh, so I just wow. thought, yeah, how did those two worlds kind of come, come together? <laughs> Is that my legacy, former fixture of Greenwood College? Not even well, like a student. You know, I, just, uh, that's fair enough, fair enough. I meant that as a compliment. I just I, I knew you through Greenville College and I, I didn't think you went here. So No, actually, I, I pondered with the idea of going here and it never happened so but anyway um she worked at the, one of the local video stores and i would just go in there and uh and like there was this cat that i knew who worked there and him and i would gavel about music and that's kind of how we met basically was through him so so i guess credit goes to steven for that much so and uh and then beyond that you know we just kind of kept moving forward so um this album was kind of a slow process uh, you know what did you say? Well, the, Painfully? the whole thing was slow, but the actual recording of it, that was pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's true, that's true. It was, it was kind of a lot of ebb and flow to the making of this record. Um, but uh, but thankfully, Trinka is grace with a lot of patience. And so, uh, you know, so anyway, so we just kind of soldiered on and eventually spit this record out, basically. So sure, no, we're, we're already writing for the next one. Tell me uh, about the, the recording of, of this record. I know uh, you have kind of a home studio mm -hmm. where you do a lot of your stuff. And, yeah. Um, how did you know? How did this uh, project happen? Uh, uh, how do you mean exactly? Well, I, I mean, it, it was all just recorded in your living room, or I mean, uh, did you guys get together and do writing sessions? And <laughs> oh, I got you. Um, uh, basically, like uh, I would write the stuff at home, and then I would make a demo of it with me singing it. And then sometimes, because it was written, or I was attempting to write for her higher vocal range, being a female, I would do like a really bad. Prince impersonation or something. <laughs> it was just awesome. Get, it was just, awesome. Yeah, just trying to get the idea across, you know. And so I would send those to her, and, and she just kind of dwelled on them for some time. And I sent her the lyrics and everything, and she came out and um, uh, she tracked incredibly quickly. But you had some, you know, a fair amount of time to digest what I'd sent you and stuff. And she came out, and the cool thing about working with her is like I can just call out characters or moods, and kind of because of her drama background, she can just really immediately snap into that kind of headspace and deliver whatever particular vocal needs. So. 
it's just a lot of fun to work with in that regards. But yeah, but we did it at, at my house basically, in the dining room and back in uh, in my bedroom. I had a rig back there at that point, and that's where the whole thing was done. So I've had a couple people ask me like, "Oh, what studio did you do this in?" <laughs> <laughs> Our Juna's sound room. <laughs> is in a bedroom recorded in two nights. Yeah, 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 bedroom. Her, yeah, her vocals actually for the whole record were done in two days, two nights actually. Cool. So. Now we we heard uh, the uh, elusive track there, and uh, I mean I think that paints a pretty good picture of your sound. But tell us a little bit about the sound of the band, and uh, maybe even you know your influences and how that came about. And and I mean if you this is a slippery slope, but if you want to compare it to anybody, just so people kind of get you know get the idea for what it is. No, I think that's fair. You want to you want to take that one first? Um, Ian calls it organic electronica because um, it's got I mean it's got the the usual electronica sounds in it but it also it, i mean a couple of songs have you know like crickets chirping or you know cars driving by and just you know sounds that you wouldn't normally hear in something that's pure electronica but mm -hmm. you know fit it in there and sounds pretty awesome thanks trinko <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome ian yeah the whole organic ele uh, organic electronica Monikers. I basically just wanted to find something really pretentious sounding in here. <laughs> <laughs> case whatever on NPR for some reason. No, I mean in influence, uh, influence wise, like I, I, I mean I know you do, but I listen to a lot of different stuff. Yeah. I mean just a lot of stuff. I mean I think primarily for this record, um, I'm probably definitely pulling from a lot of my kind of overtly British Euro pop influences <laughs> and noise pop influences like Curve and um, uh, and. Well, we've both recently really gotten hooked on the Ting Tings and, um, you know, just different stuff like that. I mean, I, I think we like stuff that kind of always has a sense of motion to it. You know, it's always kind of moving forward, but we didn't want to fall into the pitfall that a lot of electronically based records fall into, which is it's all the same groove or it's the same mood or it's the same batch mm -hmm. of sounds. And we really, even though it is based as an electronic record, there is live instrumentation at times, there are guitars, there are things happening at times. And we just really wanted the thing to be like a, a melding of, you know, the real and the, the unreal basically and stick those things together with, you know, and try to get some good hooks, try to get some things that um, stick with people but still have a lot of ear candy so a friend of mine said um, listening to this record on headphones is almost a nauseating experience <laughs> because, because it, it moves around so much and there's so much play with like the stereo field and whatnot and mm. so I take that as a compliment personally absolutely yeah well I, and I want to compliment you guys uh, I mean I've I'm been familiar with a lot of what Ian's done before and that sound is still kind of in here I mean I can tell you were involved in this project um, and obviously the the base of this radio show is Roots music, so that's kind of my particular taste. And I do like some, I guess, electronica, or, you know, or those kind of things. But it's generally a single or two, you know, and I can kind of sit through about that much of it, and then I'm done. Like yeah. you said, the album after a while, it's just it's just too much. And I listen to this, and there's a, I mean, there's different depths and different kind of textures and feels, and you know, I mean, it's it's just uh, it, it it's. Organic electronica. Thanks, man. Absolutely. I'm glad, so. I'm glad that stuck with you. It did. <laughs> so, it did. Yeah. I, well, uh, I mean, one thing I'd like to say is just that we, we we wanted to make a record. A lot of people today are making a collection of singles, or it's not even a collection of singles. Sometimes they just drop whatever single. And you're about the same age that I am. I mean, we grew up listening to records. Right. And we remember a time before MTV where you stare at the liner notes for hours on end. <laughs> drop it back on the turntable over and over again and and, and I miss that in music I sure. like listening to an album from start to finish and uh, and that's what this record was sort of designed to be it was kind of a, a journey of a record basically as ridiculous as that might sound but it was supposed to be something that that touched on a lot of different things in a lot of different areas and a lot of different ideas and but keeps moving forward kind of kind of like a movie in a way I, mean, I think it's sure. a, I think we intended it to be a rather visual album so if that makes any sense to anyone out there, <laughs> it did to me. I'm the I'm the weird That's guy. You know, all the all the kids come up here, the college students come up, and they bring their laptop or their iPod, and they plug it into this jack over here, and that's their show. Yeah. And here I come up like a mule, pack you know, packing with <laughs> I actually wanted to all these CDs. I, I wanted you know, to state for the listeners at home that y you're an actual DJ. <laughs> like I walk in and there's like the stack of CDs and real CD players, and you're sitting here flipping stuff. Like I I, I did expect to walk up, see a laptop, and like iTunes or you know, no. Winamp playing or something. But Not here. Nice man. Yeah. I, I download MP3s when it's one of those, like you said, where you know.